There were 18 of us who met for seven days to learn and experience space-related science. We met at NMSU Carlsbad for a NASA Summer of Innovation Camp. We learned and had fun at the same time. We learned a lot about our sun. The sun is about 1.4 million kilometers in diameter. It is 75% hydrogen and 23% helium. Other elements are oxygen, carbon, neon, and iron. These are pulled to the center core by the sun's massive gravity. The sun consists of many layers. The chromosphere and the photosphere are at or near the surface. The convection zone is deeper and the radi radiative zone is near the core. They make up the sun's system of fusion that gives us light and heat and emits massive amounts of ionizing radiation. We learned about our solar system and concentrated on the terrestrial planets. The reason why I have taken this opportunity is because I would like to become an engineer for NASA. This became my dream when I was in the sixth grade. Becoming an engineer for NASA would be a great privilege and a huge accomplishment in my life. As you can see, the, the sun is about 4.5 billion years old and will begin to get larger as it consumes its fuel. The sun is our heat source and will live for another 10 billion years before it dies. Our sun is an average star. Although it seems big, there are even bigger stars like Sirius. The sun will form into a red giant in about 5.5 billion years. The sun will give off an extreme heat that will kill off all the life in, on Earth. After the sun turns into a red giant, the hydrogen gas starts to run out. So the, star, the sun will start burning the other elements, starting with helium and ending with the iron core, thus making the, the star a white dwarf. The red giant can no longer support itself, so it collapses into a planetary nebula. The white dwarf will be formed near the end of our sun's life. The white dwarf will cool until it burns out all its fuel. This process will take three to four billion years. The United States has almost 450 satellites in orbit around both the Earth and the sun compared to both Russia and China who each have less than 100. These are the most recent scientific satellites in orbit. Most satellites take to similar orbital paths circling near the center of the Earth. There are approximately 3,000 useful satellites in space, and there are around 6,000 pieces of space junk orbiting the Earth. Bars and back. Let's look at what we'll need to get there. We might use one of these to land on Mars, but we just don't know yet. One reason for a trip to Mars is that we need to do a lot more research on the planet. The reason for more research is that there is water ice on Mars. Someday, if Earth ever becomes uninhabitable, we will know if it is a possibility to live on Mars and still have food and water for all the people who are able to make it. The rocket that will be used will have to protect the astronauts from radiation and other hazards. It will also need to have enough space to carry food and water for the trip and the stay on Mars. Then we need to send a pickup ship with enough food and water. This trip will take about two years and much funding to complete, so we will have to wait until we get the right requirements. As we keep an eye on the sun, space weather can be predicted, but solar winds do change and can become very dangerous to our astronauts. Because Carlsbad, New Mexico is home to the WIP site, our community is very interested in the topic of radiation. This is why our proposal is an experiment about radiation in space. We want to compare radiation levels on our football field to levels present in space. When I grow up, I would like to be an aerospace engineer, a rocket scientist, or a civil engineer. The aurora borealis is created by radiation from the sun. Even though this is beautiful, the gamma rays would be harmful if they would be able to penetrate Earth's atmosphere. We're lucky, though, that the magnetosphere, shown below, protects us. The name Aurora Borealis is Latin, meaning northern lights. Long ago, the appearance of Aurora caused a range of emotions in the people who witnessed them with no scientific explanation. The Aurora can be seen on the exterior of Earth's atmosphere from space. Satellites take pictures in space. This picture is of the sun. These pictures were taken by the Hubble satellite. The first is a group of stars in deep space. The second is an odd-looking nebula. The reason I attended this class is because I intend to become a physicist in the Army. We did a number of experiments and activities. We learned to be very clear and specific in writing directions. This will be important when we write about setting up our launch experiment. How high is it? In this activity, the students had to post the pictures of various satellites and aircraft on a high chart to show how high they can fly. We had to research 
and do lots of conversions from feet and miles to kilometers. It was a timed competition and was really fun. Foamy Rockets We each made a powerful rocket out of foam and other materials. This was really fun too. Falling Water and Fire Drop This activity is where we learned about microgravity. It was demonstrated by watching water and a flame drop about 15 feet in the air. In this experiment, we saw how hot water has a lower density than cooler water that causes a gravity-driven fluid flow that makes it rise above the cold water. And we saw that salt water is more dense than unsalted water and it settles due to gravity. Food coloring helps us to see it. Gliders. This project is where the students made gliders and flew them to see how far they would go. We measured the distance in meters. Inertial balance is the best method for measuring mass in microgravity. Drag and aeronautics. Here we had to design a soft landing system, save the egg, and create as much drag with our materials as possible, taking the longest time to land. Two liter bottled rockets. We filled our rockets a third of the way full with water, then pressurized them to 60 psi with a bicycle pump. A special launcher let us hold them until ready. When we pull the ripcord, blast off.